In the distant year of 1240, the legendary Japanese Zen master Eihei Dogen composed a text called Keisei Sanshiki, which translates to something like the sounds of valley streams and the forms of mountains. In it, Dogen writes, and I'm slightly paraphrasing here, Before they attained the one credit clear, the ancient masters were just like us. After attaining the one credit clear, we will be just like the ancient masters. In the somewhat less distant year of 1999, the equally legendary Shmup Studio Rising released Battle Backgrade. It concludes the loose trilogy of Shinobu Yagawa-led titles, but also include Battle Garega and Armed Police Batrider. Those two are some of the most beloved shoot-em-ups ever created. While hardly anyone ever talks about Battle Backgrade, I've always wondered why that is the case. Now that I've cleared Backgrade, I wonder even more, because this game is extremely nice. Now I must confess that there were two things that kind of slowed down the process of me getting into the game, and I'm sure they affect others as well. But that's why I'm making this video, to tell you that they can, and should be, overcome. The first issue is aesthetics. Garega and Batrider set a pretty high bar when it comes to graphics and music, and admittedly, Backrate doesn't live up to that standard. It just feels more generic in terms of theming, visual design and soundtrack. To this I say, give it some time. The more I played, the more I started to appreciate that trademark rising attention to detail when it comes to pixel graphics, especially in the boss encounters. And while the music isn't Manabu Namiki quality, I found joy in its 80s-style heroic synths and guitars. The tracks that play during the final stage are the standouts for me, evoking some of the atmosphere of Kenji Kawai's scores for the Pat Labor movies. I don't think we need any more shmups with this kind of old-school warplane theming, but if you're one of those people who've bounced off the game because it's, quote, ugly, just try and stick with it and see if your opinion changes. I know mine sure did. The second and bigger obstacle is the lack of guides. Now, I think that people often overestimate the difficulty of getting into the Bat series. I mean, they are complex and there's lots of stuff in them that the games just don't tell you, like how to best manage that famous rank or dynamic difficulty. But if you can sit through a video guide or commentary video, like the ones that I've made for Garega and Batrider, you're going to have all you need to start playing. The problem with Backcrate is that, as far as I can tell, there is no beginner's guide or full commentary available anywhere for clearing the advanced course, which is the full-length mode of the game. There's an excellent wiki page, thank god for that, and there's plenty of replays available on YouTube. But just watching the replays without an understanding of the game's mechanics is a bit like knowing that the answer to the ultimate question of life is 42. It's like, that's cool, but what's the question? Going through the Shmops wiki page is super helpful, but you still need to figure out how to turn this information into play. My experience of clearing back crate was like wrestling with a mathematical equation where I had the beginning and the end but I was missing the lengthy middle bits. It was time for me to let go of the guidance of my ancient masters. It was time to find the ancient master within myself. Jokes aside, Backrate isn't really that confusing if you've played Garega or Batrider, but it still takes some time and effort to grok what's happening in this game. So in the interest of helping this unplayed game attract more attention, I thought I'd do a little guide and a commentary of the advanced course. Again, it's a shmup very much worth playing. To start us off, I'm going to do a little comparison between the entries in the Bat series, just to get a sense of what kind of a game Battle Backrate is. So, out of the three games, Battle Garega has the highest amount of routing, but the lowest amount of dodging. Patterns can get really vicious and your hitbox is pretty big, so it's really a game that you need to plan out to keep rank in control. Armed Police Batrider is surprisingly different, 
with the lowest amount of routing and a moderate amount of dodging. You don't need to really study the game to clear it as long as your shmup skills are up to par. And finally, Backrate has a moderate amount of routing but the highest amount of dodging. And this is my favorite ratio out of them all. Backrate feels closest to a bullet hell game out of the three, while also demanding that you have at least some understanding of its deeper systems. That is, if you want to clear the advanced course, which has the full 8 stages. The normal course ends after stage 6, which is still a sizable chunk, so you can use it to check the game out, have some fun without worrying about rank, all that good stuff. Like Let's Blocking says in his commentary of this mode, it's still fun for normal people. But in this video I will be concentrating on getting the advanced course 1cc, and with that in mind I have 10 tips to share with you. Many of these will sound familiar if you've played Garega or Batrider. And like I always say, please check out the Schmops wiki for more information. 1. Pick up only what you need. Every power-up, medal and bomb fragment contributes to rank increase, so you don't want to be picking up absolutely everything. Be sure to power up and stock up on resources, but if you don't need it, don't take it. 2. Don't hoard lives. The only way to decrease rank in this game is to die, and the less lives you have in stock, the bigger the rank decrease. The name Backrate seems to come from a festival of sacrifice, and that's a pretty major hint on how you may want to approach this game. Another reason for not collecting too many lives is that the more of them you have in stock, the bigger the rank increase when you collect a new one. 3. Be careful about spamming bomb fragments. You may be tempted to use their ever-present fragments as a way to cancel bullets, but keep in mind that bombing increases rank. This doesn't mean that you should be afraid of bombing, because it is a major part of the game. Just be careful about slipping into spamming, at least until the late game. 4. Find a stage order that works for you. There doesn't seem to be an optimal order to the stages, and there aren't any hidden boss shenanigans like in Batrider. I like having the desert in number 2 slot, because it's a pretty hard stage, and I like having navy last because the boss isn't that bad and I like to save up some bombs for the next stage. But that's just me. And by the way, choosing the stage order yourself adds to rank increase, but using the randomizer doesn't. So I just use the randomizer until I get what I want. 5. Use the first half of the game for rank control and then go all out during the second half. The first 5 stages of Battle Backride aren't terribly difficult, but the challenge ramps up significantly for stages 6 through 8. So use those easier stages to keep rank low to increase your chances in the end game. 6. Use the Schmops wiki to figure out which ship to choose. I went with Flaming Viper because it seemed like a very common choice and friendly for new players. Like with all the bat games, the attributes of your ship change according to which button you press at the selection screen. I'm playing the C variant because Flaming Viper has really good side shots and because it's a tradition for me at this point. 7. Be sure to check out the other hidden commands too, like changing the color of the bullets or your auto-fire frequency. I play on the default 15Hz for the first half of the game and raise it to 30Hz during the cloud stage boss rush. 8. Just like in Garega, you can get special option formations if you do certain things, like getting the very useful homing formation if you let 5 bomb fragments drop off the bottom of the screen before picking up an option power-up. Every time you activate a special formation, it adds to the rank build-up, so you may want to be a little selective about it. I set up homing during cloud stage and try to keep it for the remainder of the run. 9. You can cycle through your basic option formations using the C button, but for some incredibly misguided reason, there are also these hidden commands that do the same thing, which means that you can change out of that special formation that you planned out for yourself 
if you accidentally input these commands. Not a game breaker, but very annoying. 10. There's a scoring trick that you can do on the stage 1 boss that allows you to stock up on several extents right at the beginning of the game, which you can then sacrifice to lower down the starting rank. It seems impossible at first, but becomes pretty consistent once you get it. The way it works is that you get a multiplier for every part of the ship that you destroy, and if you manage to keep the chain going, you can get a times 64 multiplier on the final attacks. The chain is on a short timer like in Dodonpachi, and you extend it by destroying stuff, but you can also extend it by bombing or dying. So it becomes this choreography of moving, bombing and dying in the right place at the right time, with the twist being that you need to destroy the separate parts without destroying the main hull of the boss too early. You don't need to do this trick to clear the game, but I just found it very fun to learn and I thought I'd showcase it in this video. And by the way, if you want to see what trying to chain the whole game this way looks like, I recommend this special demonstration on Icarus's channel, which may just be one of the craziest shmup clears that I've ever seen, with the player gaining and sacrificing about 50 lives in a single run. This game can get pretty weird. And that's the basics of Battle Back Raid. Next, we're going to see them in action in my one credit clear of Advanced Course, and this was my best run of the game by far. I had so many close calls where I would get to the final boss and then just game over there because I didn't have enough resources or I didn't manage to clutch out the dodges. So it was really satisfying to finally get the clear. And I hope that it can inspire some of you to go for it too. As I said, I think this is the only beginner's guide and commentary of the advanced course available on YouTube. So if you're interested in the game, but don't like my style, then too bad for you. You're locked in with me. Actually, you're locked in with yourself. There are no ancient masters, apart from you becoming the ancient master. To paraphrase Dogen once again, there are many who drift into schmophood, but who only use it as a bridge to fame and gain. It is pitiful and lamentable that they do not regret the passing of this life, but vainly go about their dark and dismal business. When can they expect to become free and to attain the one credit clear. Even if they met a true master, they might not love the real dragon. So, I'm playing the Japanese version of the game, choosing the advanced course, then randomizing the stages till I satisfied and then I choose Flame Viper with the C button to strengthen my side shots. And now we're on to the strangest stage one <laughs> in all of shmups, where I don't use my main shot at all. This is what uh, many people do, uh, because, well, if you're not upgraded and there's no sense to upgrade during this stage, your aura attack and the charge uh, shots are way more effective than your main shots, and it's also, it's just way more fun to do this <laughs> once you learn it. And now we're already at the stage 1 boss, and here I do the strat. So, I bomb the uh, turrets on the right, then try to damage these turrets on the left, and then bomb to finish them off, then do some damage to the missile launcher, bomb to extend the chain, destroy the missile launcher, then uh, damage the cockpit, bomb to extend my chain, <laughs> destroy the cockpit, and then I actually bomb too early here, so here I drop my chain and I don't get the bonus from destroying the boss. So if I did it right, if I had delayed the bombing just a little bit, I would have exited the stage with I think like 7.5 million or something, 7.4. And that's not a huge deal because obviously this run was still... This was an intentional death, by the way. Uh, yeah, so the... It doesn't really matter in this round because uh, obviously this cleared, but uh, the fact that I didn't get the, that last uh, score bonus during the stage 1 boss means that I won't be getting an extra extend at the very end of the game. 
anyway, so yeah, uh, doing the boss strat means that I got three extends at the beginning of the stage, and you kind of have to be careful to uh, self-destruct at opportunate moments so that you won't miss picking up those extends, and that can actually be a little tricky sometimes. So I'm choosing to play the desert stage first because it's kind of what I uh, became accustomed to, but also because it's kind of tricky and now here I'm not picking up any options. I'm doing a little bit of powering up, but it's kind of a tricky st stage so it's nice to get it out of the way first and if I take an extra hit here, extra death, it doesn't matter that much because I have so many extents uh, here at the early parts of the stage. With this, with this boss, nothing too special. The first phase is easy, and during the second phase, I always bomb to just, just take care of the boss. And now I'm dying intentionally right here uh, to do some rank reduction because every time you start a new stage, you get a rank bonus. So it doesn't make sense to like do lots of intentional deaths in just one stage. So I just do, 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 it, do one at the beginning of the stage. Um, if this was the fourth stage, this railroad, instead of being the third, I would be collecting a lot of bombs here because I'm going to start stocking up with some bombs uh, for the late part. But here I just ignore them and just play normally. Again, no options because my side shots are so powerful. Uh, nothing too fancy here. And it's kind of funny how short the stages are in this game, but it's also kind of fun. Because again, we're at the boss. And I'm going to do the same thing as with the uh, desert boss, where I kind of just chill during this first phase. Well, not chill, but <laughs> it's not too hard. Uh, I just misdirect the, the big turrets. And then when, st when it starts doing this attack, I just bomb because it's kind of. It's not super hard to dodge, but it can be sometimes kind of hard to see uh, where the, the. This is an intentional death again. So yeah, the big turret, when it starts to do that crazy attack, um, where it goes from side to side, can be kind of hard to keep track of what's happening. So I just bombed there for safety. And yeah, so I took another intentional death here at the beginning of the stage, and this is going to be my uh, last intentional uh, death of the run. So from this point on, I'm playing for real. And what I'm starting to do here is I'm picking up those shots and side shot power-ups to get them to max level. You need three of both, uh, but still not picking up any options. But I'm picking up a lot of bomb fragments. I'm trying to get all the bomb fragments that I can. There's an extent that I picked up um, because I want to have as many bombs as possible when I go into the cloud stage because there's going to be that boss rush in there with like, I don't know, six bosses or something. and. It really helps to have some bombs to get through that stage without dying. So, yeah, stocking up on some bombs. Otherwise, nothing too fancy here. I'm just taking it slow, taking it carefully. And I don't, I don't think this stage is very, like, it's not complicated or hard when you just play for survival. This boss can be a little bit tricky uh, because it has lots of attacks and sometimes they can catch you off guard like this <laughs> pink stream that almost hit me. You need to do these really wide swings uh, to kind of misdirect them. And watch out for this. When the boss dies, he can still uh, kill you. So <laughs> uh, just be aware of that, uh, that, that thing. And this one can it's this one's a, a little bit hard to keep track of everything. Kind of reminds me of the Esperade helicopter boss, but just I try to stay in the center and just I don't know if if things get too scary, I just bomb. But I didn't need to there, which is nice because again I think if I play uh, this stage well, I should be able to exit this stage with I think maximum bombs which is super good for the next stage the cloud stage when the uh, quote-unquote real game begins so here again doing these wide swings to misdirect bullets this game is all about tap dodging and going from side to side in doing the like streaming and herding bullets and just doing that 
a U shape uh, again and again. So really good practice for that if you haven't learned to do it yet. It's like Dolompachi stage 5, but for the most of the game. It's kind of funny. This is kind of a scary section because you can see all the bullets coming from those side turrets, but the, the distance is kind of weird, so it always feels a little scary to me. And you'll notice that I've picked up two options already, and it's not because I don't really need them for this stage, but I just get ready for the cloud stage because you can have a maximum of six options in this game. Uh, and I want to have all six when I get into the cloud stage boss rush. So I just start, you know, picking up those uh, options here and there so that I won't be surprised in the cloud stage where I'm... where I wouldn't be in a situation where I suddenly would need to pick up a lot of options and I didn't have them, so... yeah. But the options do help here, especially in this section where you can get a lot of bombs from these side enemies and this big enemy, so... yeah. Just trying to play carefully and collect as many bomb fragments as I can. And I'm already at almost max bombs because five big bombs is the maximum that you can have in this game. So uh, this is turning out to be really excellent in terms of resources. And this first phase of this boss is really easy. There's nothing too complicated. But the second phase is a little, a little scary and I sometimes end up bombing here. It's kind of 50-50 whether I bomb or not. So, yeah, you really need to watch out for those small, like, fire bullets. Yeah, these ones. And then you need to get into the center of the enemy or to the sides. But I, I wanted to go through, through that bullet stream because it's just cool, you know. So kind of fun to do a little bit of showcasing something in this run instead of just playing for uh, pure survival. And this st stage should look very familiar to you if you've played Garega and you'll have those same ships here and here is where I set up my homing option so I make sure to leave uh, well I just failed there uh, but to leave five bomb fragments to exit the screen here bomb five bomb fragments leaving the screen and then I pick up the option and then I get the special power up which means now I have the homing option which is kind of attacks the go straight to the enemy to attack attack it which is really good to have for basically remainder of the game if you can manage to hold on to it and if you happen to lose it you can always set up it later too but this is the easiest part where you can do it and i think it's kind of made so that you can set up the homing option here if you want so uh the boss rush is pretty scary and this boss is one of the hardest for me and i usually i have a planned bomb here but I'm not quite sure why I decided to try and do this bombless. Maybe I tried. Maybe I got a little bit like greedy because I'm in a really good shape right now. I have full bombs, so I'm wondering maybe I could. Maybe if I save up some bombs here and there, I could go get through this stage. Maybe even the next stage without lo uh, losing a life or something. So I'm kind of trying not to bomb as much as I can, making sure to pick up that extent there. So with a lot of these bosses, you need to do that bullet hurting from side to side. I got a little, little nervous there, so I bombed, but that's okay. I still have four whole bombs left. This, bomb is one, this boss is one of the hardest, especially the second phase, where it gets really tricky to misdirect that uh, horizontal pink pattern. As we see here, now it goes to the right, but now I get stuck in on the left side of the screen. I ended up bombing. But, and again, I get trapped by those bullets. Uh, two bombs for this boss, not too good. Like, one bomb would be better, but again, it's all good because I'm in a good shape now. In some of my other runs, I would take several deaths during this stage and still would get to the final boss. And obviously, I wouldn't clear, but it's still possible to... Even if you take some deaths here and there, you're still kind of... You still have the chance to clear which I actually really love about all these uh, uh, bat games like Garega 2, where people always say that Garega is so difficult, but remember that every time you die, that's also, that's also rank reduction. So just don't lose courage, don't lose faith, just keep on trucking. Um, here again, streaming those bullets from side to side in wide arcs, and then this one, 
this one this is really tough. Reminds me of the later bosses of Garega. Really hard to keep track of what's happening on the screen. And here, I just bomb for safety because <laughs> those, like, uh, staying in those really tight bullet streams, it's a bit, it's a little bit hard, and not a little bit. It's really hard to do, even when your like your hitbox is smaller in this game than in Garega. But it's still, it's a, a bit too much for me. And since I have those resources, why not use them? Because I like wanted to save my resources for the last boss of that previous stage. And now, uh, with this stage, the beginning part is... I advise, my advice would be to stay pretty low on the screen. Because you can be tempted to go get those bomb fragments or start playing more aggressively. But it's probable that you get punished by the game like the tanks will start sniping you from below or you get these um, pink enemies that start appearing soon that have yeah these ones that have these destructible missiles that flood the screen with bullets and again I recommend staying low on the screen so that they won't get uh, kind of a chance to attack you from below or something but again try to get as many bomb fragments as you can now we're entering uh, the wall, again similar to Garega. And this one's, is, this one's really hard to dodge for me because, again, it gets so crowded. So I usually end up bombing here at least twice, I think, maybe even three times. But I have lots of resources, so this should be okay. And I'm bombing especially the center part, which shoots those pink bullets, which are the hardest ones to dodge. So yeah, I don't want to go through that, so <laughs> I just played safe here. So yeah, that went well, and I still have almost a full bomb for the boss of this stage, which, which is actually really hard. Like, the, the game has a nice escalation of difficulty, where the last bosses, like the, uh, this boss and the final boss, are the most difficult ones, in my opinion. Here you want to misdirect those flamethrowers, just keep do dealing damage to the enemy and then we're going to get some scary patterns here and here I just try to keep uh, just to try to stay below the boss like in the center position just kind of staying dead under the boss as much as I can for me for my experience that is the safest place because it starts shooting those missiles from the sides that you need to destroy and sometimes they can kind of trap you where you don't get the opportunity to destroy them in time so and here again i try to get just underneath the boss and stay there but obviously it's going to do that jump attack and i'll try to evade that one but then after the jump i'll i just kind of move my position underneath and so uh i have to say that this uh <laughs> again this is, isn't very representative of my earlier runs because I still haven't had a non-intentional death in this game. And that's really crazy because in most of my runs I would take deaths. I would take several deaths in the cloud stage or I would die to the wall or I would die to that previous boss, which is really hard. So this is my best run of battle back rate by far. So it's kind of, kind of crazy that uh, it has been going so well, but um, yeah. With this stage, you need to play, it's like again like in the factory stage from Garega. Uh, it's pretty tough and you need to take it slow and very carefully. You need to play very considerately because don't make any like ra <laughs> super rash movements. Don't try to move too quickly because you will get clipped by an unexpected uh, sniper bullet or something. These round turrets are really bad, so this is where I usually bomb. Uh, I usually always bomb uh, during that section and here is a good opportunity to get some bombs and you actually want to start getting into position for those big turrets that are coming right here and I was too much to the center so I need to bomb here uh, you want to start from the very left side or right side and just tap dodge to uh, misdirect those big turrets I'm out of bombs, but the final boss is approaching, so it's starting to look really good right now. And what happened here is you'll notice that my options went away from the homing formation, they went into a basic formation. Uh, well, first they went to the kind of a side formation, and that's because you have those 
stupid <laughs> uh, commands, hidden commands that you can do to change your formations because, and I accidentally inputted one where I really didn't want to because the homing is so good and I would like to keep homing. But it doesn't really matter because at this point uh, <laughs> we just have this crazy uh, mid-boss or pre-boss here. So it doesn't really matter, but it's an, it's an annoying feature of the game. And here, if you don't manage rank, uh, this section might really destroy you badly because like, I had one high rank run where I just couldn't destroy any of those destructible missiles that it shoots from the sides and I just kind of... my run just ended there <laughs> before getting to the final boss despite me having several extents. So anyway, that uh, last section before the boss is always really scary, I maybe should have practiced it more. And now the final boss, this is where a lot of my good runs ended, where I was really hopeful to clear and then I would get to the, this boss and it would crush me. And now I'm out of bombs, but I have free extents, so I'm feeling really hopeful that this is the run. But I know that it's not. we're not out of the clear because this boss fight goes on for quite a lot of time and it has a lot of different attacks where you need to do a lot of precise dodging. Like maybe not this one, but many others. And I get a little lucky here, I think, with the next attack, if I remember correctly. Uh, no, not this one. Uh, but yeah, for this run I just managed to keep it together somehow and got I just found my dodging pants, so to speak. Uh, and just like went into 200% concentration mode. And this is my best, uh, this is my best final boss fight by far. Again, again, this this run was really good by my standards. That was the lucky dodge that I was expecting. I I really was just it was just an accident that, that I was in the right place. And this attack is really scary. Often I often die here, and I think I end up getting clipped sometime soon. And yeah, as you can see, the boss fight just kind of goes on and on and on. I don't know if you do a more rank reduction, maybe the boss has less HP, but in my experience it just takes a while, especially if you don't have bombs. And yeah, this is where I die, that's okay. I try to catch as many power-ups as I can and they just bomb immediately because I don't want to take any risks. And whoa, suddenly the boss died and I was I was kind of, you can see me doing that crazy dance with the ship because I was so happy with clearing this game because it's such a good game and I had so many like runs that almost cleared and, and it al always felt really painful to die to that final boss after like fighting the final boss for a while. So yeah, uh, super happy about playing this game, getting into this game despite not having all of those guides uh, available to me, like with Garega and Batrider. But yeah, uh, love this game. I hope that this um, video encourages some of you to try this out for yourself. And let me know if you try it out, if you like it, whether you maybe you dislike it or something. Uh, but yeah, I really love my time with this one. So yeah, hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you enjoyed the run and Thanks for watching and be seeing you. Bye.